Golfers, we are back in the Tour Van Bay here at Second Swing with seven muscleback blade irons, and Thomas Campbell will hit all the shots today. We'll break down the TrackMan data and tell you the differences between each one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing. And Thomas, right up your alley today. Uh, seven muscleback blade irons from the past couple of years that we're gonna test today. Uh, so we kind of like to do this about every year or so, right near sort of ultimate comparisons, bring in you know, all the models from a certain category, testing them all on TrackMan. Today we got the muscleback blades, the smallest club heads out there, uh, really not much forgiveness packed in, but a lot of workability and really good feel. Yeah, so these are the clubs where you mentioned it, workability. Workability mm -hmm. is important, feel is important, and just knowing what the golf ball is gonna do once you, once you hit yeah. it. Um, there's not too much technology packed behind these irons. One thing I do know for sure is they will spin the most out of all the comparisons we do because the loft right. is a lot weaker. Right, loft is definitely gonna be closer to what you're used to. It's not the, uh, the game improvement irons that are down to 27, 28 degrees. We're back up in that 33, 34, 35 range here with these irons. So um, the seven models we've got today, we've got Ping I-59, we've got Mizuno Pro 221, Callaway Apex MB, the Wilson Staff Model MB, the Cobra Ricky Fowler Forged MB, uh, Shrixon Z Forged, and the TaylorMade P7 MB. So, Thomas, I can't imagine you're fitting a lot of these in the bays, but they each have their own unique characteristics. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I mean, it depends on the player coming in, yeah. but there's not too often that I get a scratch golfer or beyond right. tour pro player coming in for, for a club fitting. Most of the time I'm fitting golfers with a little higher handicaps. Yeah. Um, but it's always fun to talk about the differences between these particular irons. So these are irons that essentially have been, been out for the last two years. Yeah. There's a couple of manufacturers in here we don't have. Um, yeah. For example, Titleist 620 yeah. MB, I think it was like 2019 yeah. when that came, came out there as well. Um, I think there was a couple of others that came out yeah. in 2019. So these are the irons that we've been fitting in the last couple of years here at Second Swing, and I'm excited to see the differences between them. Yeah, um, one thing before we get started, shaft. Um, yep. And then kind of just the format of the test in general, what do we got today? Yeah, so all the clubs, we have the Modus Tour 120X. Okay. So every single golf golf club we hit, it's going to be the exact same golf shaft, and we're going to be yep. hitting with the Titleist Pro V1X golf. Perfect. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it and hit some shots. It's pretty good. crazy how different the sound is from like a really any other club and then you get a blade and it's just yeah it's just quiet it's like a soft thud versus like the kind of a crash almost with the other clubs yeah, you really feel it when you hit it good and easy to work yeah it actually does turn over for me a little bit there's five that was a good one look at yep. that There you go. Interesting on the spin there, a little bit lower. A little more speed. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. More speed, more spin. Yep. Also the open face. Just a little shorter, seems like, with that club in general. Must have been maybe more loft than the other one. Turned over just a tad. Oh, that's a couple good shots in a row there, consistent. That draw is turning over a little bit more. Just a little left. Well, that dispersion ended up pretty small. Well, Thomas, that's four irons. Uh, we've got five shots on the board with each. Uh, first, I want to ask, you've got all four now in front of you. Uh, you made a few comments as you, you were about to hit each one on how they looked. So um, the Ricky Fowler, the, the Cobra, is very small from what I saw on the top line. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's at a completely different spectrum compared to, say, the, the Z Forged yeah. that was at the other end of the spectrum. Okay. So the first four irons that we hit, yeah, the, the Ricky Fowler Forged MB, very, very tiny top, yeah. top line for yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's the smallest of the of the of them all. The Mizuno Pro 221, yeah, and the uh, the Wilson Staff mm -hmm. 
MB. Yeah. They were very, very similar in looks. Okay. So I, I, I'm looking down at the two of them. The only thing I can really see the difference is the Wilson has those dots out on the toe. Oh, and You okay. can see kind of on, on the yeah, edge where, sure. The, sure. where the, the score line Sure, sure. The just a little is. bit bigger than those ones? Yeah, but otherwise, you know, those two are very, very similar in size. And then the, uh, the Strixon Z Forged is significantly larger okay. of all the blades that I've hit so far. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, numbers wise, we can do a quick breakdown before the final three here. Um, club speed is very similar. The only, I mean, really, I see just a little more spin with the Cobra um, and a little bit shorter, so could be loft related. Um, but I mean, nothing really jumps out a ton. You're kind of seeing it's, it's funny to watch you hit these type of irons and yep. watch how your north to south dispersion shrinks so quickly because of how consistent they are when someone is hitting the center of the face like you are. Right, and just the workability. Um, yeah. When I've hit game improvement irons, I have a harder time turning them over. Right. Most of these balls, if you look at the curve, it's gonna be average yeah. curve to the, to the left. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm able to hit my little draw that I like to hit. Um, there is one thing that did stand out to me though. Um, yeah. If you look at the smash factor numbers, mm -hmm. you got one four zero with three of the irons. Yeah. And then that Wilson Staff Model MB, mm, yeah, 143. And it's not even like the fastest club speed or anything like that. So it was going a little bit further in yeah. distance, just a couple yards further carry distance. Yeah, interesting. Maybe just but. a little bit hotter on the face there. Because um, it's, you know, yeah, there's that, with that, you know, efficiency, right? You had a little bit of a jump in ball speed there. Um, now it's, it's fractional at the end of the day because the spin did go up and thus your distance difference wasn't like huge. Yep. Uh, but it's worth noting. I mean, that's that's a pretty good ball speed for a muscle back blade um, in this category. So I guess we'll see if any of the final three can top that. All right. That was a better swing. Yeah, it was. Interesting smash factor numbers. Gonna turn over. Oh yeah. There's a six thousand spin. There we go. All right. We've got the data. All right. All the testing complete. There, Thomas. We had three left. They were the Ping I fifty nine, uh, Callaway Apex MB, and then the P seven MB from TaylorMade. So. We talked about the look and feel of these. I remember you said the Shrixon Z4 was kind of the biggest uh, club headed address, and then the Cobra uh, Fowler blade was the smallest, kind of yep. the thinnest top line. So where do these kind of fit into that spectrum? Yeah, so that that will remain. Um, yeah. The the Ricky Fowler blade was it was still the smallest. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Kelly Apex MB wasn't far off. Okay. That still that looked a little bit more like a butter knife yeah. as well. Looking looking down at it. Um, P7 MB, maybe a, a touch larger. Okay. Kind of in the middle with yeah. everything else. And the I-59, you know, it looks it's maybe a touch smaller, but it's a little taller in the face. And okay. you know, I can't, you know, forget about all the different grooves, all the right, extra right. grooves on this iron here as yeah. well. Yeah, those Micromax grooves, you know, tighter spacing, but more, a couple more grooves, I think. So uh, might have a different look to the eye than uh, you're used to at a dress. And when I say like, you know, the, the Z forged, is larger and it's in relevance compared to the other irons looking down on them. It's not really, no, yeah. it's not a, like it's a game improvement it's iron. It's not a like large that. iron, it's just yeah. in the scope of what we're comparing today, it's on the larger scale, but you scale it to every iron out there, it's you know on the very small side of things, obviously. Yep. Um, so looking at all the data here, so we've got five shots with each club. Um, I think we, you kind of noticed, you know, we didn't have the loft numbers in front of us, but even looking at the P7MB and then hitting the shots, seeing the data, you're like, I think that's 35. Looked it up, confirmed that it is 35 degrees. So that would be the, the kind of the cause to the effect of the more spin Correct. and um, the slightly kind of lower distance numbers perhaps. Yeah, it was still impressive to see the, the smash factor number was still the same, even though it had a little more yeah. loft on compared to the other irons. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, we talk about that smash factor number, that Wilson Staff model MB1.43, it was, 
You know, everything else is 139 and 140. So mm -hmm. that was a little higher there. Yeah. 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 I think that's one thing to note for sure is, I mean, I, I think you also want to talk about consistency. Because that's what you want with these irons. The players that are playing these are really consistent ball strikers and they want to know what they're going to get out of every shot and, you know, very detail oriented. And so I think you, the deviation numbers are something that the better player will look at here. The spin on a few of them is a little bit better than others. Yep. I'm talking about the P7 MB is pretty good. P, the I-59 is pretty good. The uh, Cobra uh, Fowler Blade is really good as well. And then you get down to you know the Wilson Staff models, solid. The Mizuno is pretty solid. So you have that consistency. And, a, and a, to be clear, all of them are really good and consistent. But I think there's just a sum in this test that jumped maybe ahead of the others. I mean, this is what the golfer, when they're fitting into these irons, is going to be looking at. Yeah. Is we're looking, we're looking at that standard deviation. We're looking at that consistency number. Because mm -hmm. in the end of the day, the players that are playing this, they don't want to be off by a couple yards. They right. want to know that the club is going to do the same thing every single time yeah. for them. Yeah. Right. Um, I want to touch a little bit on, you know, I talked about Strix and ZX Forge being a little larger club head. Yeah. I'm just kind of looking at the launch and I'm looking at the spin. I find yeah. it interesting that, you know, visually looking down at it, it's a little larger club head to look at. Mm -hmm. But then I see that launch angle a little higher and I see that spin rate a little lower. Yeah. So there may be something to do with there, but I mean, it's significantly lower than, than the, uh, all the others with regards to spin and it's significantly higher with regards to launch angle. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I didn't, I guess I didn't catch that until now, but because you typically think of a larger club head being, you know, the, I guess, lower spin, but then you also get the high launch here with the Z Forge. So maybe, yep. I mean, it could be construction and, and the build of the iron a little bit, but something to note there. Um, otherwise, I mean, the other thing too, just how consistent the peak height was with really every iron and the landing angle, they're all within, you know, basically a, a degree or two degrees for all of them. Uh, you get from what 48.7 here with the Apex MB is the lowest. You get 51.7 with the uh, Wilson Staff yeah. model. And um, that Wilson Staff model was flying the highest. It looks like yeah, you know, one one nineteen feet with a land, landing angle with 51.7. Yeah. And it was interesting because we noted that at the beginning, maybe a little bit hotter on the face, did maintain as the highest ball speed by a couple miles an hour. Yep. Um, Smash was just a little bit more efficient, so that resulted in just a little bit more energy, a little bit more spin, and probably the reason that ball was, that, uh, or that club, excuse me, you know, produced the highest shot of all of them yep. on average. So. Yeah, so yeah, all excellent, excellent stuff here. You can see you know, club speed maintained within about half a mm -hmm. mile an hour between all the irons, which gives a very fair test. Yeah. And finally, I want to look at this dispersion pattern because mm -hmm. let's face it, this is, this is my dispersion pattern. This yeah. is going to be different for everyone that comes right. in for a fitting. Results are going to be different, looking down at it visually, looking at a club. But this is why it's important, you know, a takeaway, what you're looking at when yeah. you're getting fit. Like, end of the day, I like to ask my customers, I'm like, which circle do you like best here? Mm -hmm. Which one makes the most sense? Well, you can see there's a couple of smaller ones. You can see there's a couple straighter ones as well yeah. and a couple of larger. Now, we're talking within a few yards. This is a yeah. pretty tight dispersion pattern. It is. It's, yeah. um, but when you do a fitting, you might see a certain circle that all of a sudden is so much smaller than everything yeah. else. And that's something and to I, pay attention to. And I think too, it's not a, for some players, they don't necessarily want the one that's straightest or the one that's farthest. You know, they might be looking for which club turns the easiest, right? Which one yep. draws the most. And you see here, you have that tendency to the draw but there's certain models that draw just for you a little bit more than the others. Um, but they might want, for example, the Ping I-59, where it's, there's you know, three of them that are right basically on the center line and then kind of one each side, you know you're gonna get a, overall a pretty straight dispersion and you have cons consistent um, distance there. But I mean, it goes without saying with all these, the, the north to south kind of dispersion there is pretty darn good with all of them. So right. again, knowing what you are going to get out of the iron is, definitely prominent in each of these clubs here. Yeah, I think stay clear of the north to south dispersion. We're yeah. looking horizontal. Like a large one. We want it to be as small as it can compressed yeah. this way. So that way, you know, if your pulls or your pushes, they still go on the pretty the same distance. Yeah. You're going to hit your numbers a lot more often on the golf right, course. Right, exactly. A lot of different irons out there with different categories. You get that kind of almost on the map like diagonal look where, you know, the ones that you pull go farther, the ones that you push or have leave it face open go way shorter, spin a ton but you don't get a ton of that with these irons um, when they're hit uh, toward the center of the face. So, but a lot of good information here. Uh, again, not the category of irons that's most popular out there, but the details and the finer things that these really good players are looking for all in this test here and got some really good stuff, a lot of key takeaways. So Thomas, thanks for hitting all the shots. Pretty good display of ball striking there. And I think we gave some viewers a lot of information about these irons here.